This is the uh, 27th of uh, July 2010. We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. We're going to run tests for A.J. Meyer and Sons. What we've got is beeswax, and um, it's got some impurities in it from here and there. So I'm going to have to be careful of uh, condensation on the lens. Anyway, this is a, a screw press, motor, gearbox. We've got uh, the screw turning. We're going to feed this wax once it melts in here. Uh, we're going to we set this press up with all these uh, four connections to inject steam into the press. That's we're just going to try and keep it hot so that the wax uh, stays molten. We've got an air cylinder here uh, and a brass discharge cone. The air cylinder will push that cone shut. I see some. Uh, white foam plastic so we clean this press out with foam. We'll probably get a little bit of foam out when we uh, get running. Oh, quite a bit of water around here. That's steam condensation because uh, you can see the blue line. Uh, that's going to our boiler over here. So we've got an, uh, a boiler making steam. At the same time we're taking uh, a sample of beeswax and we're heating it. We've got a uh, Propane tank, propane burner down there, uh, double boiler arrangement where we're heating this water to uh, melt the wax. We want to get it up to 140 to 180 F. There's the press where we're going to do the testing, and uh, we're in the shipping, receiving, and test area. So here's a screw press, um, another screw press, another screw press. We've got, there's a pair of them getting ready for shipment. And um, anyway, well, the reason I came over here is to spot a screw press that opens. Uh, we have a huge rental fleet, so when the press comes back from rental, um, Whatever damage it's had, we just let it sit till uh, we know that we're going to uh, what we're going to fix it up for. So this press was run with a lot of trash through it, and we've uh, unbolted the screen. And you can see that the screw here's the inlet hopper flighting there. It the flighting ends, and we have these resistor teeth. Then we've got more flighting. Another resistor tooth, more flighting, another resistor tooth. So there's interruptions in the flighting of this screw. The uh, reason I'm showing you all this is because what we've done on the press we're going to use in this testing is we've drilled holes through this resistor bar and the steam is going in the length of these teeth and injecting in against the shaft of the screw. Uh, this one has five teeth, the press we're using has four, but uh, you get the idea. Here's the flights that we uh, use to make the screws. Uh, we're down in the uh, screw manufacturing area. See a lot of flights around here, some pretty big screws. Um, what I've got over here, here's the shaft of a screw turning in a lathe. Notice the step shaft. We're increasing the diameter of the shaft as we go along to press the material out against the screen. This is the assembly department. Here's the frame of a press, another white one in the background. Here's one that's a little further along. Uh, this is all, this gray metal is all stainless steel with a carbon steel base. Um, presses going together, not finding the one I was hunting for. Here's a threader. Uh, we make threaders to go with our presses. We've got three KP24, uh, KP16. There's uh, some people from Bolivia we're supposed to be visiting today. And um, 
Uh, they want, were interested in a KP-24. I'm not sure where they're going to. The presses, that is. Okay, I, I found them. It's back here. Uh, screen department. These are a couple of rental KP-16s. Um, see, this one was used on... Let me see what that is. Um, but there would be a motor and a gearbox. Oh, we've been taking this one apart. That's what this frame is about. Um, screw has a fairly big diameter shaft. Anyway, a more conventional, newer design machine. Air cylinder mounted on a pedestal with a support bearing. These wheels pushing that discharge cone. In here you can see the... Uh, Screen, screw, there's the outside of the screen, inlet hopper and gearbox. KP-16. So looking at it before, here's the third KP-16. Uh, this one's got perforated screen. So I mentioned all three of these are spoken for. Um, this was a rental machine. I can see it's still on a skid. And... Uh, has the air cylinder and lever arm to push the uh, cone in. Looks like it was being used on, it might be tobacco. We were doing some testing with tobacco. We're still cooking here. I'm seeing some steam bubbles coming up down there. And yet, over here I've got the bottom of the pan and nothing seems to be melting. We'll give it more time. We may be uh, back to the uh, drawing board on this. Anyway, it was reading uh, 175. There it is. Well, I've got 162 now, and it is not melting. Well, that's Fahrenheit, it's 10 or centigrade. I may have to make a phone call. Okay, uh, this is uh, Thursday morning. Uh, plan B. Um, we took a five gallon pail like this of the beeswax stuff and poured in. It took about five gallons of water uh, to get that. And it's, um, well, we've got a fire going. And we're going to heat this up to uh, 180 or so. We've also uh, turned on our boiler over here. And, and we've got the press going. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Okay. I'm up to 127F. And this material, a neat scooper they made for me this morning. Um, this is what it is looks like. Okay, we're getting going here. That's a, steam is coming because we're injecting steam in. Oops, I need to close this cone. I'll do that with a valve right here. Oh, no air pressure. Whoops. Uh, stop. Okay, uh, I saw this stuff was pretty thin. It looked like a lot of water was coming out when we ran this little bit here. Um, we, now, we ran that out without squeezing it. So, um, what we've done is we're going to uh, heat up the rest of our sample and um, so we'll have a thicker material going into the press. We're uh, just running the initial part, a few scoops that we put in. It's coming through the screen fairly heavily, but that's because nothing's passing through this press. We've just got it dead ended. And uh, but you notice it looks like wax is coming through there. That looks like wax to me. And I look at this liquor down here. I think I see some. 
accumulation of wax occurring. Somebody who knows what they're looking at may recognize this. Okay, now we got Fred helping me. And there's my scooper. And by the way, we get a lot of free water out. But uh, you can see this stuff is thick uh, in there now. I'm expecting to see this cone open up. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to reduce that air pressure. I'm at 40 psi. You always get wet stuff out to begin with because it hasn't been pressed. Uh, but now that we have this pressed full, it could start pressing and it should take to come out. There's the liquid we're getting out. And the inlet hopper is running empty. Go ahead. The press is taking this uh, at a good feed rate. You're getting spit on, which uh, tells me the uh, material is blinding the screen and then being cleared as the lights of the screw come around. Could be something to do with the steam. Getting a little bit of cake. You're right, Fred. Cut it down to 20 psi. Okay, now I'm getting some more cake out. I'm getting channeling, so I'm probably going too fast. That ought to be hot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut down the speed of the VFD. Go ahead and you turn down the VFD. I think it's digital rather than with the knob. This stuff feeds very rapidly. Now that's good performance. coming out here, liquid there. Get down here. Want me to help with that VFD? I'm going to pop this cone open because I am channeling very badly on this side. A rotating cone would install that, a long wind feeder would solve it. So, uh, that's a different kind of feature in the press that we would need. Oh, I just worked the air valve to open and shut that cone. And, um, any luck, Fred? Yeah, but it's sticking down in hundreds, so it's off as well. Okay, we're down to. 20 hertz, one third of the speed we were running at before. I've still got some channeling, it's not as bad. Uh, this looks like a terrible mess here, and all these solids coming through the screen. But if you watch it, compared to the amount of cake coming out here at the discharge, the amount of solids coming through the screen are not that great. Uh, we're definitely getting some, squeezing some of the water and whatever out of it. Uh, that's, I see my steam boiling there, so I still have some steam injection. I've got the steam valve down pretty, pretty low. Yeah, it's a better with the lower RPM. Crank that steam valve wide open over there, Fred, the one on the top of the hose. If I hadn't uh, made this too dilute by putting in too much water to start with, I was going to use a second tail without any steam addition. I think it would have worked.
log my lens. Hold on a second. I want to see what I've got down here. And with a lower RPM, it's speeding slower. As you would expect, although it isn't always that way. Okay, it's, it is still feeding. It's not bridge. It's feeding slowly. Well, interesting. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Check and see if Fred left this at 20. Yeah, new regulator it holds. Thank you, Parker. Watch the regulator. Now we stopped feeding it a while ago, and uh, so it should be winding down. Huh. It's uh, capacity definitely low. That was the screw turning that you saw there. We still have the steam wide open. A bucket down here is um, not as much water as I added. I'd say it's uh, four or five inches from the top of the pail. Cake still coming out. Of course, I have a full wood hopper. I heard something clank there. Not to worry. I've got this channeling problem, but if this cone was spinning, you can see I wouldn't have it all coming out one side. I could strip it loose so it came out more uniformly. That happens with spent brewer's grain. Uh, thinking of my KP-16, they would use a uh, rotating cone. Okay, I opened the cone and so the cake is still coming out. Of course, it's not being pressed. And uh, basically, I'm just trying to get the press cleaned out now. We'll tear it down, sandblast everything most likely. Okay, we were right there. And right here, I got one with a rotating cone feature. Notice this one is pushed in with the wheels. And they press against this plate. So that's my cone right there. It happens to be shut all the way. So this is the cone. Notice I got this big pin screwed into the cone. And it is latched onto this collar right here. And this collar is clamped onto the cap of the screw. So as the screw shaft turns, this collar turns, this pin turns, and the cone rotates. Uh, that's the feature I think we should use on the uh, beeswax. I've got a sample baggie of the uh, press cake. That is, I scoop some of the hot stuff off the floor. Here's my bucket of press liquor, and I see some, uh, looks like wax over there. sides here. On the side over here, I assume that's where it's cooler. The pot got to boiling before we were through. And, uh, that's what was left. There's the... Uh, not sure what that's all about, but something happened there. That's Must be the wax. Some down in there. Puddle of it over here. Found another uh, stream of wax. This is on the uh, cake discharge end. Not quite sure what was going on there. Uh, this hasn't been dripping this long since I pulled out the uh, bucket, but I think I'm looking at wax down here on the floor. This is where the bucket was. The outside of this bucket is uh, still 162. So, uh, I didn't expect to do that on I can't believe this. What I have here is a honeybee. Where, where is it? There he is. Look at that. Huh. Wouldn't it? Look at that, a honeybee. Well, something's going on here. He knows something I don't. Okay, uh, still hot, but you can see uh, layer of wax 
I assume that's what I'm looking at. And what I'm going to do is take my stick, reach down to the bottom of this bucket, drag it up. You see how much suspended solids I have in there. When I hit this wax, it's just a very thin layer. Um, Normally the sludge that would come through is filtered out of the press liquor, put back into the screw press along with the other stuff going in. That is the fines that get through the screen. We count on filtering them out, putting them back in the press, and catching them the second time through. Um, there's a circulating load in the press liquor, but it means that the only liquid leaving the system is the filtered press liquor. Uh, that would be going in ahead of a centrifuge. Close up of this cake. Odds and ends, but it's proportion. Not much trash in here. Not bad.